Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a bit different as in I'm not making anything for you today. I'm just going to be gabbing. Yeah, it's what I do best. <laughs> I do that very well. Uh, today I am just going to be talking about a festival that I am going to be participating in and my channel in the next few months is going to be geared towards me getting ready for that festival and I thought I would just share a little bit of a background with it. Because this festival I participated once and I said never ever again ever am I doing this festival. Well you know never say never right? <laughs> Hey guys, my name's Tammy. I'm the owner of Walnut Creek Bath Boutique. And yes, let's talk about this festival. A little background information on the festival. It is called the Covered Bridge Festival. It is held in the county of Park in Indiana. So Park County of Indiana hosts this festival every year. It started off in 1957 in Rockville, Indiana. And uh, three ladies got together and just started uh, selling their wares and I think maybe inviting other uh, local makers to sell uh, to capitalize a little bit on the uh, tourists that would come out to look at the covered bridges. Uh, Rockville, Indiana is known as the covered bridge uh, capital of the world. There's like 30 covered bridges in the county of uh, Park County. Um, like 27, 28, 29, something like that. I can't remember, but it's, it's, it's a lot for one county. And um, it started off in Rockville, and then it grew to Mansfield, and then it became Bridgeton, and then now it has all these uh, outlying towns all around the county have this festival. Almost 2 million people that come into the county every year for this festival. So it's huge, huge festival. So when I started my business back in 2016, people would always say, hey, are you going to do Cover Bridge? And I was like, hey, no, I'm not doing Cover Bridge. <laughs> no desire to stand out there in the cold or the heat or the storms or the you know rain or snow. Who knows what comes in October in Indiana? No. Plus, I'd have to take you know a week and a half off work and I would be so tired because you have to be from like, 10 to 5 or 10 to 6 or 9 to 5, 9 to 6 usually. It's like, no, I don't want to do that. Not, not interested. Plus, I don't know if this is true, especially like the hot spots or the, the bigger attractions, which is like the Mansfield Bridgeton locations, which is just like fields in the middle of nowhere. Uh, those, those rentals, rumor had it was two or $3,000 for the 10 days for a 10, 10 by 10 spot. I don't know if that's true. I, I really don't know if that's true. Um, but I knew that it would be well beyond my ability to pay for any sort of booth rent to to be a part of that. But really the biggest downside was I didn't want to fight that. I don't want to do it. Not for me. <laughs> I'm a delicate flower. <laughs> uh, but Fast forward a couple years and I have my products in a in a boutique, which is no longer in business. I had just on a consignment and she came to me and said, hey, Tammy, I I have a I think she called it like a barn or something at the covered bridge and I will sell you a corner of my space to and I will take your products there. I heck yeah, I'll do that. And I don't have to fight the weather. I don't have to, I don't have to work it. I don't have to take off work. Um, I don't have to travel. Perfect. I'm in. And that's when the mistakes started happening. <laughs> so this video is going to be me telling you my mistakes, what I did wrong and what I'm going to do differently this year, because for the last few years, I was like, no, not doing it, <laughs> not doing it. But looking back on that experience with in 2018, I think I made every mistake I could have made and I lost my shirt. I lost so much money. Okay, so let's just go on. So mistake number one is I really paid way too much for that corner of her barn or whatever and and when I when she would say barn I was ex I was I was envisioning 
that she had a space inside. They have big barns, like pole barns out there that people have spaces. All, you know, there'll be like 40 vendors in a barn or something. That's what I was envisioning, that she had that kind of setup. What happened was she had like a shed. Okay, so it was like a 10 by 10 or 12, you know, just like a shed you have in yards. She had that. And um, she had my products in the back corner. So I paid $600 for that back corner space. And at that, when I, when I was thinking that she was in this big barn with all these other vendors, I thought, that's worth it for me not to have to take off work and for me not to have to work it. And all I have to do is send my products and she's taking care of everything. I felt like that was a good price. If I had known that I was going to be in the back corner of a boutique shed, I wouldn't have done that because you walk by the doors, you know, and if you're not interested in boutique clothing, you're not walking in there seeing my products. So my, I had, I mean, I didn't ask the right questions. I didn't ask enough questions. And, um, yeah, that was mistake number one as I paid way too much for a little back corner in this little shed behind all these boutique clothing items. Mistake number one. Um, mistake number two was I sent my products with someone and I thought that they would sell them. Well, I know by now fully that nobody is going to sell my products as well as I can. They don't know how to answer the questions. They don't know how to pitch it. They don't know how to, uh, show enthusiasm. There's no, I mean, when I'm at a craft show, I am standing pretty much all day and I'm trying to draw people in and I'm trying to infect them with my enthusiasm over the products that I have and try to kind of, you know, strike up a conversation and let them know what's available or what's in a soap or what's in, you know, a cream. There's none of that when you send your products with someone else. And that's a huge mistake on my part to think that I could sell and sell a lot of product when I wasn't there trying to, I don't want to say pitch, but it's kind of like you pitch your products at these places. You want to, to pull these people in and get them excited about your products. Um, so that was mistake number two is thinking that she would sell my products. Her goal wasn't selling my products. Her goal was selling her products and my products didn't sell. Okay, $600 for that booth space, guys. <sighs> okay, so here's, here's the hard, hard part to admit. This mistake, these next couple, two or three mistakes are kind of all in one. It's hard for me to admit this. Okay, I had two million people floating around in my head. I had her telling me that the, her location, that um, it was in Bridgeton, saw 250,000 easy, 250,000 customers going through Bridgeton in that 10 days. And I was just like, whoo, I had stars in my eyes. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to sell so much. And I made way too much way, way, way too much. I think I, I have, I try to look back to see. I think I made at least special made, not what was already on my shelf to sell, but I specially made about 13 cents of soap. And I made 110 bars of each soap. Because in my mind, I wanted to send 100 bars with her of each cent, and I felt like that would be really easy. So then I could count them and quickly know what I sold. I, so she wasn't having to keep track of all of that. All I, all she had to do was bring me back my product. I'd be able to know exactly what was sold. So in my mind, I sent a hundred bars of soap for 13 different cents. <sighs> Wax melts. I, I think I made about 10 to 15 different scents of wax melts. And I'm trying to remember, but I think I was taking, I think I sent with her 40 or 50 of each scent. Guys, oh my gosh, the amount of money I spent in producing these products, it was, it, it, it was beyond ridiculous. I spent so much money 
buying fragrance oils, buying oils, buying butters so that I could make so much because I was going to sell so much to that 250,000 people that came through that, that uh, festival. Oh boy, no, didn't work out for me. So just to back up, I sold $416 in product. I paid $600 for my booth. I probably spent two to $300 in ingredients and packaging. Yeah. Another thing I did is I bought like little gift bags. Okay. <laughs> and I thought, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to have a liquid soap and a scrub and maybe a bar soap. And I had all these, you know, little gifts brought up and I thought, oh, these are going to be so cute. And I, I was, I was going to sell them as a gift set for a discount and <laughs> I have it out. I bought shred and I wanted a pink shred for a certain sense. I wanted a purple shred for like lavender and other different scents I had. Then a white and red because it was Christmas, you know. Um, look at this box of shred I bought. I bought this box of shred, four of them, because, you know, pink, purple, red, and white in 2018. I don't know if you can see. It's falling out. It's full. <laughs> it is, I've barely made a dent in it. These things were expensive. I had no idea what I was buying. 18, 19, 20, 21. Three years later. Three years later, I barely made a dent in the purple. I barely made a dent in the pink. I don't even like the colors. I don't like the pink that I bought and I don't like this purple. Anyway, I still have four boxes. Four boxes of this. And I don't even like them. And three years later. So just like I said, the amount of money I, I spent in packaging and, and those gift bags did not sell. They didn't, they did not sell. I think I sold one or two. I had like 30 of them made up. They didn't sell all year long. They didn't sell. I had to take them apart and try to sell the items out of it separately. Um, and then I sold the bags to an Avon lady <laughs> for her to use, but yeah, it was, it was not smart. Um, I spent, I spent so much money on top of my booth and, and, um, it, it, it's shameful, really shameful. Um, so another thing I did <laughs> was I had my son, he, he tinkers with, 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 uh, woodworking. So Chase, I had him make me a slab mold that held 55 bars in each slab mold. And he made me two or three. I was not at a point in my business where I could comfortably make a, a 55 bar batch of soap. I just wasn't there. I was forcing it. And I did a lot of layers and, and, um, it was, it was not fun and, um, it was not good product. I, I did them. I, it, it, they weren't something I was proud of. So the, like the, the designs weren't anything to speak of. And you know, guys, I love my designs. Um, there wasn't anything special about them. I didn't put any goat's milk in it because that was expensive. And I was making, you know, 110 bars at a time because I was doing a double batch at one time. So I would do like 110 bars of soap at one, at one go. Um, so I didn't, I didn't add the goat's milk. I didn't add anything extra. It was your standard as, as cheap as I could get it, as um, unimaginative as you could be. That's the most shameful part to me that, that I put out that product that wasn't what I would have. I wasn't proud of them. I wasn't proud of that product. It was overwhelming. I dreaded making the soaps. I just felt like I had to because there were so many people coming through that festival. I felt like I really had to make all those scents and all those bars and I had to send a hundred bars of each scent. And so not only did I overwhelm myself and really burn myself out and not enjoy the process of it, I put out bad product. 
I'm not going to say bad product. I just didn't put out anything special. It was as basic a bar of soap as you can get with different scents. That's all I could, that's all I could, I could, uh, um, I was ready for. I just wasn't ready. I just wasn't ready for that 110 bar batch of soap and two different molds. And, um, yeah, guys, it was, it wasn't pretty. I, I don't want to put, I don't want to down myself too much. I mean, like I said, they were, they were decent bars of soap. There wasn't anything wrong with the soap. They aren't the quality that I put out now. And I don't think they were the quality that I was putting out prior to that. Just because I was so overwhelmed with this thought that I have to make a hundred bars of this. I have to send a hundred bars. I have to send a hundred bars. I have to make 110 because that's what my mold held. And then I have to, you know, so <clears throat> those are my mistakes. This is what I'm going to do differently. <laughs> so let's talk about what I'm going to do differently. So I am going to be at what's called, it, it's a, it's called Billy Creek Village. It is indoors, so I'm happy about that. I'm so excited I get to be indoors. Uh, and my booth rent is $500 for a 10 by 10 spot indoors. It's the first year that Billy Creek Village is doing uh, uh, the festival. They are opening up the, it's it's like a one of those back in time type of thing. You walk through and you see all the, all the things that were like, when they had a mill or something. It's, it's been quite a number of years since I've been to Billy Creek. It's one of those back in time type of walkthrough places. Um, but I'm really excited that uh, the booth rent is reasonable for one thing. Um, I'm, not, I'm not expecting to get a 250,000 people walking through Billy Creek Village. I don't expect that kind of traffic. Um, but even if I did, I'm doing things a lot differently. One of the things I'm doing is I am only buying what is absolutely necessary for me to buy. I'm not doing gift bags. I'm not taking my face products. Um, I may or may not take deodorants. I haven't decided about shampoo bars. I don't think I will, but maybe on the weekends I will. I, you know, I haven't really decided about that, but I'm not taking my face products. Um, I'm kind of looking down my shelf here. I'm going to definitely take my creams because they sell very well. Every single show, I sell good creams. They, those are good sellers for me. I'm taking my creams, I'm taking soaps, I'm taking wax melts, and probably like uh, scrubs. And then I'm going to take my bath bombs. I am not going to overwhelm myself with the making of. I'm not going to feel like I have to make, even if I scaled back, oh, I have to make, you know, 50 bars of each scent. If I sell out, I sell out, guys. If I sell out, I sell out. I don't don't care about that. I have I, I'm sure I'm gonna have plenty of of products. Um, another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use up all of my uh, fragrance oils that are that is on my shelf. And so um, any fragrance oil that has been on my shelf for six months or longer, those are the so those are fragrance oils I'm gonna be using. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to get to kind of clear through and kind of start fresh after this year um, in 20, 2022, the effort standards are changing. And so I'm happy to kind of use up and sell what I have on my shelf. Um, so I am going to be using what I have without purchasing any more specifically for the festival. I am going to be putting effort into every bar of soap, every batch of soap. I am going to be putting my goat's milk in there or my coconut milk. I am going to make them pretty. I'm going to have fun with the process and I'm going to bring you along for the ride for that too. I've already started some of my soap. So some of the videos before this is me trying to get ready for, for the festival. I'm going to be making a lot of wax melts. Uh, I feel very proud of my wax melts right now. I think I have a really good uh, product to give. And I'm going to be making a lot of those, but again, I'm not going to be making a hundred of each cent. I'm not going to sell that many, uh, maybe 20 to 30 of each cent. And that may even get me through the end of the year. I'm not sure about bath bombs yet. Uh, I have to wait for the humidity to drop a little bit more before I start making bath bombs. And I'm just not, I, I want to have some, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, kill myself trying to get a bunch of bath bombs made. 
just not going to do it, guys. <laughs> so I'm sure I've been talking for like an hour. Feels like it to you, I'm sure. Um, I think that's it. So I'm really, really excited about this festival. I'm going to do everything different. I'm going to be putting out good product. I'm going to be enjoying the process. I'm not going to be spending too much money. It's hard telling how much money I actually lost. And, and I don't, I don't think I want to know. It's beyond the $200 I lost just in booth rent because I, my booth was six and I only made about four, a little over four. But between the, I think a hundred, hundred dollars, hundred fifty dollars in shred, all the bags, all the, all the just stuff like the little bottles and everything like that I made. Yeah, it's hard telling how much I lost. Hard telling. And not only that, but I had so much product left over that I had to mark it down to ridiculous numbers just to get it sold before it went bad. So not only did I lose money in in the sales and at, at the festival and lose money in all the products and, and expenditures that I had. I lost money in my personal sales trying to get rid of this product that I made way too much of. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the festival history with me. <laughs> so guys, that's it. I'm going to get off here. I just wanted to share a little bit of that background because I am going to be talking a lot about the Covered Bridge Festival. I just wanted to kind of catch you up to speed, so to speak. You know, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm doing. And this is how I'm doing it differently. And I'm looking forward to it. I am working it. I did have to take a week and a half off. And I'm going to be tired. <laughs> I'm going to be pretty tired. <laughs> Delicate flower, remember? That's me. <laughs> um, I thought if I can figure out YouTube shorts, I don't know. I haven't even looked at them yet. But I thought I might do like short little one or two minute videos every day and post those just to kind of like give you guys um, some updates live. Not really live, but I don't know, like every day, just a, a quick quick short video of, of where we're at and how it's going. I've got a few months to figure that one out. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but thanks so much for your time, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you uh, don't make any mistakes that I just talked about and, and hopefully, hopefully keep you from making any of those mistakes. And um, I'm going to be very okay with selling out. So <laughs> I am not over making this year try really hard not to over make this year. <laughs> I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs>